Hey Crafty Fam, it's Alex Vanover back with DIY Alex, and in this video I'm going to show you how to download your own images and upload them into Design Space. So super excited to show you guys that, but stick around until the end of my video because I'm going to answer one of the most frequently asked questions that I see from new Cricut users like all over the place. So stick around for that, but for now let's get started. All right, so when you pick a website to download an image from, you can do this from, um, I'm personally using Creative Fabrica. They are a newer website that I have found and I absolutely love them, but you can do this from any website um, that is safe for your computer. Once you find the image that you like and you wanna download, you're just gonna click the download button. And most of the time, you're gonna notice that your files download as a zip file. If you get them from Google, they won't let us download as the actual file type that they are, but most of the time it is from a zip file. So we're gonna give this a moment to download and then I'm gonna show you how I save it so that I don't lose my images and then how to put it in Design Space. While we're waiting for this download, um, I want to tell you guys a little bit more about this Creative Fabrica website. It is newer to me, but I am absolutely loving it because the SVG files that come on this website for crafters are actually made for crafters. So that means that they are actually good for cutting machines, which is great. Um, they are thick enough to cut. You'll find that as you go onto places like Google or other websites that are made for graphic, um, or files that are made for graphic designers, they're not really made to cut on cutting machines. So your machine may struggle with them a little bit just because um, they're not thick enough or they are too complicated or whatever. So these are actually designed for crafters crafters and that is what I love about these files. All right, so now that we are downloaded as a zip file, we're gonna click on it, which is gonna show it to me in the folder. But when it comes up as a zip file the way that ours did, we're going to have to extract it in order to upload our files into Design Space. So go into the folder where all of your files are and right click, and you're gonna see the option to extract all, and that's the option you're looking for. So then you want to click browse because you want to save your files in a place that you are going to be able to find them. So on my computer, the way that I have set them up is on my desktop, I have a folder called craft files and then SVGs. And that is where I save my, um, where I save my files so that I make sure that I never ever lose track of them because that can be really, really confusing. And when I have a big file the way that I do with this one, I go into my SVG folder and I make a new folder just for this SVG. So I just right clicked and then I'm gonna go down to new and select folder. And so I like to you I like to title my folder with where I bought it first. So I bought it from Creative Fabrica and then I'm gonna put red Valentine's truck. So then I'm just going to find that folder. It's going to automatically go in alphabetical order. And I'm going to select this folder as the place to extract my download. Then I'm going to select extract. And that way it's going exactly where I want it to go. So then it's automatically, at least on my computer, it automatically pops up when it's finished. And you'll see all these different file folders within my Red Valentine's truck folder. And this is where you can decide what you want to upload into Cricut Design Space. So let's talk file types for just a second because that's another place where I see new crafters get hung up quite a bit. So when you go into some of these folders, you're going to see that there are a bunch of different file types, a DXF file, an EPS file, a PNG file, and this is Chrome HTML document, but this is also known as an SVG file. And the Cricut Design Space prefers SVG files. SVG stands for scale ve Scalable Vector graphic and that is what design space prefers because you don't have to do any cleaning up when you get it into the software and make it really really easy some png files will work in design space um, and when you're on your computer before you get into design space most of the time your chrome html documents or your svg files are not going to open on your computer so you're not going to be able to see what they look like before you upload them so i always view the png files like this but I actually upload the SVG files. 
So I really like combination number nine. That's what I'm going to upload into Cricut Design Space. I don't know if you guys noticed, but the Valentine's truck was like a whole kit. So each one of these combinations has different hearts and different trucks to go with them, which is really, really fun because that way you can choose and customize however you um, like these and want them to work. So anyway, I'm gonna go and upload combination number nine into Design Space and show you how that works. So when you get into Cricut Design Space and you've signed into your account, you start a new project, you're going to click Upload. And you can see I've uploaded tons of images. Uh, that's one of my favorite things to do, but you're just gonna select the Upload Image button. Now, drag and drop doesn't really tend to work. You can try to drag your uh, files from your downloads, but that doesn't really ever work for me. So I usually just use Browse. So I'm going back to my SVG folder, back into my red Valentine's truck, and finding the image I want. And I'm gonna download the SVG file first, and then I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like when you upload a PNG file. So this is the, the SVG file, and you can see that it's perfect. You can see all the colors um, stayed as they were in the file, and it's great. You wanna make sure that you upload or excuse me, you change your image name when you upload. So I'm gonna call this Red Valentine's Truck 9 so that I remember where it came from. And I always like to use tags as well because then when you go into your images that you've uploaded, it's much easier to find the images that you've put in there in the past so that you don't have to go and upload them again. So I'm gonna use Valentine's Day as a tag because if I'm searching for a Valentine's design, that would come up. I'll also do red truck. That's probably all I'll tag it for, but those are just some pro tips to make it easier in your, to your design space. Then you're gonna click save. And your image is right there. You Once you go to recently uploaded images, you simply click it and click insert images. And there it is, right on your canvas. Super, super easy. So let's go back to upload, and I wanna show you guys what it looks like to upload a PNG file and why it can be kind of a pain. So in the same combination number nine, we'll select the PNG file type. And so you'll see on the right hand side, this time I have the option to select image type, and I'm going to type or choose moderately complex, and then continue. And now it's, it's really, really large, that's why it looks like that. See if I can zoom out a little bit, here it is. So right now it looks pretty good. Um, the background is transparent and that is a good benefit of PNG files. So if you are searching somewhere like Google for an image, you, want, you definitely wanna search for a PNG file, not a JPEG file because that's gonna make it a little bit even more difficult. But if I had a background, I could use the select and erase function to get rid of any background. You'll hear people call this cleaning up of designs in design space, and it's possible to do it. It's just a little more difficult than just using a straight SVG file. But let's click continue. And you'll see what happened here. So typically, if you just want to cut this out of vinyl or paper or any other material, you're going to save it as a cut image. But the PNG doesn't store any colors or layers of a vector file or that a vector file would like an SVG. If you save it as a print then cut, you can um, keep those colors the way that they are, but then you're going to have to print it, send it through your printer first and do a print then cut project, which is a little bit different than using vinyl. So if you just use it as a cut image, it's gonna be all one color like this. So I'm not gonna save it like that, but I just wanted to show you guys how that works. The same exact things happen with JPEGs, except that JPEGs don't even have a transparent background. You certainly can do this, it's just going to make it a little bit harder. So um, that's definitely your choice, but there are lots of great websites that you can get SVG files from where you don't have to mess with any of that. So that's the process of um, uploading a file into Design Space. So I told you guys that I would answer a question that I see so many new Cricut users having, and I do want to answer that. And the question is, do I have to have Cricut access in order to use my Cricut, or is it worth it to pay for Cricut access in order to use my Cricut?
And if you guys are not familiar with Cricut Access, that is the subscription service that costs $9.99 a month from Cricut. And then you have access to all of their files and all of their fonts um, right here inside Design Space. So you don't have to bother uploading images. And the answer is that choice is up to you. You certainly can do it. I don't think that it's a bad thing to do that, but I'm just not a big fan of the files myself. I don't think that they really fit my style. So I prefer to upload images from other websites into the Cricut, but you can choose whether you want to pay for that or not. So if you don't want to pay for Cricut access, there are tons of other great websites that you can get files from. Um, and this is one that I'm going to show you today called Creative Fabrica. And I'm fairly new to this website, but you guys, I am absolutely loving it. I was telling you guys before that the files I have for crafters are specifically made for die cutting machines. So the reason this is important is because if you get files off of say Google or files that are made for graphic designers, they're not made to cut so they can make it really difficult on your machine. But the craft files on Creative Fabrica are specifically made for us to do what we are doing here for crafting, which is really, really awesome. So I want to show you this um, craft club that they have which is their subscription service for crafters. And it's $12 every three months, which is a really, really great value because that means that it's only $4 a month. And you get access to all of their craft files for as long as you have the subscription. So you're never gonna have to worry about paying for files. Each time you sign into Creative Fabrica, you can just use what um, you've already downloaded or any new files you wanna download just as um, you want to use them. They also have a commercial license, which means that if you sell if you sell crafts now, or if you ever want to sell crafts in the future, all of their files are able to be used um, for that purpose. So um, check that out. I will include a link in the description to the different subscription op options that they have available, but this would be the crafts down here, $12 every three months. Um, it's just a really, really great deal, I think, and it's really, really worth it. Now, I have the All Access subscription, which I got really on sale, which was awesome. It's $29 per month, um, but you get access to all of the craft files, all of the graphics, which you could use on um, graphics, like if you have a social media page for your business, these are really useful for that. And they have tons and tons of fonts. And so All Access gives you access to all three of those. Um, which is really, really great. So you can do that. And I do have a coupon code. Um, Creative Fabrica wanted to hook up my followers with an awesome deal to their website. So you can use the code DIYALEX30 and that will get you 30% off any of the subscriptions on their website. So if you chose the all access membership, you can get um, a few dollars off of that. If you do the craft subscription and you use my code DIYALEX30, you can get it for like $8.50. 850 every three months. So that's an even better deal than it is already. So I will put that in the description for you as well if you want to take advantage of that. And right now they're having a Christmas promotion for their all access membership. So that wasn't part of the plan in my video, but they are doing this right now. You can get the all, abs all access subscription for just $19 a month. And I'm not positive that my DIY Alex 30 code will work on this because it's already on sale, but that's $10 off of the typical all access subscription. So it's a really, really great deal. And that's an option for you as well. So I wanted to make sure that you guys know about the site because it's really, really great. They also have some freebies that you can try. If you're not so sure you want to subscribe just yet, um, you can certainly give those a shot. And that is creativefabrica.com slash freebies. I'll put that in the description for you also so that you can give them a try. But there are tons of files and um, bundles of files that you can download to make sure that you like this site and you want to give it a try for free. So make sure that you do that um, and check out lots of other websites that I will link in the description that you can get other files from for your Cricut, whether those are free or paid. I'll put it all in the description just in case you want to check it out. Whole month of January on DIY Alex is all about you, the Cricut beginners. So I'm going to be doing beginner videos all month long and I hope that you guys will come along for the ride. So make sure that you subscribe right here to DIY Alex so that you never miss an upload. I hope we can craft again soon.